And welcome to This Week at Apollo. Uh, today we have a face uh, many of you might recognize. Uh, we have Derek, our, our product manager. Maybe you try it. Maybe you try it. Uh, Derek, how are you? Thirsty. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Exciting. Friday. Friday. My end. How are you doing? Good, good. Friday's uh, always a, a nice empty day at the office. Uh, you can actually uh, get stuff done, which is uh, kind of counterintuitive, you know? And I know we've been talking about coming back to the office more and more, but there is also the, uh, the other side of it, which is when there aren't too many people in here, you can actually be more productive, arguably, so. Yeah. Very true. And, uh, and and what have you been up to recently? I mean, uh, it feels like it's been a it's been a short while since we've had you on a podcast. Uh, so can you just give us a bit of a bit of an overview of what's been going on uh, over the last couple of months? For sure, um, a lot of listening, I think, is the the key word. Um, mm. So we just finished, or we're still ongoing with the U.S., but with the Canadians, it's uh, it's finished. We did our first round of uh, pro beta testing, right? So uh, we had a bunch of volunteers who have been very willingly and Honestly, they've been doing a really good job at helping us um, kind of detect some bugs and some issues with the pro hardware. And at the same time, we took the opportunity to send out a software like beta for them as well. So it's actually been a version that we've been testing now for two months. Um, so that's why for those who are watching this who haven't seen like an official production app out in, since I think July, it's because we've been really hard working with the, uh, the protesters on the 3.4 version. So that took a lot of our time. Uh, it was a whole team effort um, from the, honestly, the whole company. And the cool thing is that we've been able to test all of those features with them directly and get like instant feedback, um, send like sometimes two versions in a day. And all that feedback we've been gathering, we've been uh, putting it towards a new build. And that's what we've been testing this week. So I'm at the office testing on all of the scooters. Um, and yeah, we're hoping that by today, we're gonna have a new version officially out for production, uh, which is based on that 3.4 version I just mentioned. That's huge. And, and you mentioned that this, this has been an unusually uh, big update. Uh, you know, I, I remember in previous videos, you kind of mentioned we were committing to more frequent and kind of more minor updates. Uh, but it feels yeah. like for a number of reasons, this one has ballooned into a bigger one. So can you just give us a, a sense of what, what our customers can actually expect in terms of changes, some of the new features, uh, maybe, you know, bug fixes uh, that are all yeah. bundled into one big release? For sure. Um, I will say that this is the first big release, but there's going to be smaller ones after this one. Um, but the reason why I said listening is because, yeah, we, we've been listening to um, our users since the beginning, you know, and we've been able to kind of test what we've been like listening and, and hearing from them and like putting it to test, let's say, with these testers. Um, so the big things that we we're trying to focus on were actually not necessarily new features, but try, trying to kind of fix problems that we've had in the past. Mm. So we've had a lot of issues related to like connectivity. So, you know, the, the scooter disconnecting randomly, um, not being able to connect to the scooter, um, adding your scooter and then looking on your scooters list and realizing the scooter's not there. So those are actually like recent issues that, that we've been seeing with other users. Um, so that's really what we've been trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. So what you'll see in, in version 3.4 of the app is, again, it's an in-between, right? So we, we know this isn't the final, final thing of what we're going to have, like, you know, in a couple months from now, but we will have sort of a more of a minimal view of your scooter. So we've introduced sort of like a, what we're calling my garage. So when you first open the app, um, you're going to see kind of a list of your scooters in your garage. Um, and the top one on your garage list is actually going to automatically connect to the app every time you open the app. So another thing we got from a lot of our, our feedback from uh, our users have been, you know, it's kind of routine to have to open the app, go to your scooter, select connect, wait, you know, and see a bunch of different screens. Uh, it should be a lot more intuitive and it should be a lot more like automated. So another thing we're doing is, is having that, that functionality where now the moment you open your scooter and it detects like it, it can um, sniff the Bluetooth of your uh, scooter, um, the app is going to automatically connect, um, mm -hmm. which is a huge time saver, I think, for a lot of our users. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's probably in the top three, like most requested features, right? Yeah, yeah. Along those same lines, um, once you are connected, um, we've had a lot of issues. And honestly, it's obviously hard. We have a small team, you know, we don't have all the phones in the world. Um, so we've had some issues, you know, happening on, on, a, on a pixel from Android where like, you know, there's connectivity issues or like an S22 ultra or all these different phones, you know, it's, it's hard to be able to test every single one. Um, so we've kind of tried to find out like what the issues are related to the disconnection and like solve it for everyone. So again, in the, in the connectivity theme, um, one of the big issues we had was during a ride, um, 
basically we really, really listen to our scooter. So the moment any kind of connection problem is done with the scooter, we would automatically terminate the ride. So if you were going, I don't know, for a 10 kilometer ride, um, maybe five kilometers in, you have a random disconnection. Um, it would like stop the ride. Uh, which means, you know, at least you can, you can save your ride, but you only see half of it. Um, you, you're not going to automatically restart it. So you kind of like lose a lot of information. And, yeah. you know, for me, like that's the favorite feature of the app. It's able to kind of look back on your history and stuff. So we solve that a few ways. Um, first way is obviously the connectivity problem I just mentioned to you, trying to make sure that that's fixed. And the second thing is in the case where the scooter does disconnect, um, now we have like, again, an automation to like automatically reconnect during a ride as well. So not just when you open the app, but also during a ride. Um, which might mean you might lose a few seconds of data, you know, um, but in the end, you know, you don't have to worry about looking down and seeing are you connected or not. So that was another big one. Uh, a lot of testing went into that. I was lucky I got to ride the scooter a lot these past couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, so that, that was one. And I'd say the last big, big one um, that some of our, let's say, power users are going to notice is, um, again, in the past, sometimes if you'd go on a ride that was more than I think it was like 66 minutes or something, there's a specific limit in which in which we can record and like save okay. um, on our, uh, not necessarily a limitation on our side, but I won't get into in the technical side. So we've actually created like a new way when we're recording a ride, instead of like recording it at once and then sending it at the end and being able to analyze all the data, you know, at the very end, uh, we've actually created a way to kind of break it into different arrays and different snippets that we send mm -hmm. continuously every, every five or so minutes. And then at the end, when the ride is complete, we then will go and perform the mechanism to kind of stitch it all together and have like one big ride. Mm. Um, so the user doesn't know about it, right? Like I'm just telling you right now, but it should be relatively seamless for the user. Um, but that's going to solve the problem of, again, these long rides being saved uh, correctly and not having to, uh, not, not seeing them disappear. Cool. That's huge. I mean, like, see, see, those are all small things that, you know, I think a lot of our users have been frustrated with, right? Because and we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the, the app at its best is supposed to enhance the experience of the hardware, right? At its yeah. worst, it detracts from the experience of the hardware. And I think for a long time, for, for a number of reasons, you know, uh, uh, I think we, we've kind of been hovering in the detractor uh, category. And it sounds like a lot of the efforts that are being put into the app today are, are really focusing on just at the very least making the experience with the app uh, kind of seamless and, and pain, painless. Um, so yeah. that we can move on to the next stage, which will then continue to add value and, and enhance the hardware like we always wanted to. Exactly. I, I think uh, that's the general theme for now. Um, we've had like the past year, it's been kind of like, oh, new feature, new feature, you know, let's, let's do this, let's do that and kind of rushing things. And now, you know, as the season's kind of coming to a little bit of a, not a pause, but it's a little bit slower right now, let's say in, in, the, summer, in the summer months, um, I think we can finally take a step back, look what we have and now make mm -hmm. decisions about like, like, is this actually what we need? Where can we focus on? And I think that that goes with what we're talking about right now. It's like the fundamentals. I think we kind of lost sight from that a little bit, you know, and started thinking about, oh, how can we do this? And how can we do that? But it's like, well, wait, like we have people complaining or, or users feedback directly about a certain thing we have right now that's not working super well. So how can we kind of go and fix those? Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the theme I'd say the next, uh, well, these past couple of months and those, the next couple of months coming up. Yeah, no, that's that's obviously uh, super, super important, right? And I think to any any existing customers that are listening, um, I think this will be very welcome news as well. Uh, this notion of sort of investing in our current customers, current users, um, yeah. is, is not just limited to software. You know, I think a lot of departments, um, we, we've been working really hard to realign our priorities across departments to essentially give our existing customers better support, whether that's in the form of reliable software, uh, quicker turnaround times with customer experience or repair centers, better part availability, more servicing options. Uh, so I think, uh, you, you know, it's, it's about time. Essentially, we, we kind of uh, realigned with what's important for our customers. And uh, it's great to see that the software department is uh, leading the charge there too. Um, last question, um, and, and I, I apologize for putting, for putting you on a spot a little bit here, but if you could do anything with our app uh, over the next three months or maybe six months, uh, let, let's say kind of in the near term, you know, so maybe not over the next three years, but let's say in the next six months, what would you do? What would you change? What would you get rid of? What would you focus on? Do I have to pick one thing? Uh, it could be a theme, could be a general direction. I'm curious, you know, as someone who's using the app every single day, what, what yeah. do you think is the value for our writers in the app? Good question. We're actually going through this exercise. Uh, it's ongoing. Um, so maybe one thing I'll share before I answer that question is um, we have like a we have like a redesign coming up. So that exact question that you're asking me, I'm asking the whole team and, and the whole company. Um, what would we, we want to focus on, let's say, um, 
with the Apollo app. So yeah, I think um, there's a few things we want to focus on. Um, the first one I already kind of touched on, right? So all these improvements to the ride recording, the connectivity, it's not done yet, right? Like it's it's an ongoing improvement that's going to take probably a few sprints, so a few months um, before we can really see it being finished. So I think that for us is focus number one. Um, it really is like getting a fundamental, all the fundamental things that an, a scooter app should do, we have to get those right. And we're not there yet. So that for us is the big focus. Um, the second thing is we're, we're so we, we launched, I think I could say this, we launched Apollo Amps, right? Like the, the point system um, for, for our users. Um, and we've recently made the connection to like log that um, per kilometers log, you can get Apollo Amps. And honestly, I mean, any kind of loyalty and achievement um, rating system is, is a huge, huge project. Let's be honest, it's a massive feature that requires teams to work on. But I think we can slowly roll that out so that it gives a little bit more value to uh, to riding, right? Because for me, the most important feature of the Apollo app, other than like maintenance and seeing like the health of the scooter, I, I love being able to like record my, my history and see like how far I've ridden, how much time am I saving, how much money am I saving on gas, et cetera. And I think having a point system tied to that, that you can then use to like buy accessories and do other things um, or see like a leaderboard. I think that's pretty cool. And I think that would kind of make our users or help our users kind of understand, you know, where are they compared to, let's say their peers, or like, if I do this, it's not just going to give me like um, X amount of, uh, of founders log, but it's also gonna help me like buy things and do things, you know, with that. So I don't know. I think that's something that we're kind of toying with. Um, I think it'd be probably like the, the big feature to come. Um, so that's probably something I would like to do maybe with the app, just have a little bit more of like uh, gamification, I guess, of the app, um, just to give an users another reason to use it. Um, and I think, yeah, the, the other one is right now, um, you know, I'm really proud we have like an internal dashboard of like kind of all of our, our stats, you know, we, all, all of the, the sensors and the scooters, you know, we can see them in real time, um, more or less, and we can kind of see like all of the, uh, the user activity that way. Uh, which obviously helps us, right? Because we can determine, you know, do we need to de design a scooter that has two motors, you know, X amount of range, what battery size? So we can make like business decisions off of it. But I also want to like share that with our users, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because right now, if you look at our, our ride summary page uh, in the app, it's very bare, right? It's like, what's your top speed? What's your controller's top temperature? But over time, like over your ride, you, you don't see that, right? And I know that some of our users are actually using other apps on the side that will track that stuff. Um, so why not combine them? Um, so I think that's something that we've, we've started working on a design for it. Um, but I think it'd be cool also to have our users kind of see like on their ride, you know, what was their app, like their speed kind of throughout, what was their current, all the, 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 the data that our controller is able to capture. I think it'd be kind of cool to share that with the users as well. Cause speaking to our users, I know that a lot of them do like to see the data and like to kind of understand, you know, how does their scooter performing? What can they do differently? How can they optimize their performance? Stuff like that. So I think those are my, my three answers to your question. Cool. I didn't expect the last one. That's uh, it's quite interesting. I, uh, okay. I, I was wondering if you were going to bring up this notion of like um, some sort of some sort of an efficiency um, recommendation engine. I know uh, there's an app for, for Tesla, for example, I think it's called Tesla. And yeah. it's all about helping you maximize your battery range, right? So like turn off your um, like air cooling and, you know, use like roll down the window essentially or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like grab at this speed instead of that speed. Like it's, it's all these little things that hopefully, you know, make small contributions to extending the battery life. Um, is that something yeah. that's you know, ever come up from, from the interviews you've done? Like how do we get the more, the most out of our battery essentially? For sure. For, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it comes up a lot. Um, some simple things too, such as like, Hey, can you, um, I want to charge my battery to 80%. You know, something as, as simple and trivial as that, uh, unfortunately, yeah. from a software point of view, it's not always possible just from software, right? I think some of the things you mentioned, um, we can make like we can make decisions based on what we're capturing. So, for example, uh, if you're going on a steep hill, you know, like maybe, you know, try and do a different route, you know, that maybe won't go up that steep hill. Like those are like things we can make, I think, from a from a planning right. sort of point of view. But when it comes to things such as like like you mentioned with the battery, um, the, the big thing, the big limitation is that the BMS, like the, the hardware, like controller itself on the battery, that needs to be like designed to be able to support those types of functions, you know? Um, um, so the, there's a lot of things that like the hardware has to do first and then like the software can kind of follow it. Um, so they kind of work well together. 
But at the same time, I think that means that as we're designing our next generation of a scooter, we just have to remember that. We have to remember that, like, you know, we can't change everything via the app. It has to be like the controller, maybe on the BMS that can be improved, create new requirements for that. Um, right. So it's kind of like a two-way street. Hmm. Fair enough. Cool. I guess, uh, you know, maybe this is a good time to also open it up to anyone watching this. Uh, if you have a feature or a bug or a frustration or something you'd like to see in the app, uh, drop us a comment and we'll obviously take a look and, and take everything into consideration. But um, yeah, really, really great chatting with you, Derek. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, you know, what you've been up to over the last couple of months and giving us a bit of visibility into what's coming down the pipe. I think a lot of the stability and, and reliability improvements you're working on are going to go a very long way. So um, I think I speak for a lot of writers uh, when I say thank you for, for prioritizing that. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, where the app is in a few sprints from now. Same. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.